So, in case you are confused about where you are, there we are at HSD. Uh, I told some of my tour groups today that this is a wonderful, it's a historic building on both the uh, city and state registers. Uh, we were built in 1910 as a state-of-the-art fireproof building. Uh, we have something like uh, five miles of shelving, if you put it all into them. Uh, we have four floors in a basement, and there's reflections on every floor, including the um, including the uh, basement. And uh, look at that. This is uh, Pennsylvania limestone. Okay. This is what we look like according to a watercolor. So. <laughs> The neighborhood looks a little different. We've changed a bit, yeah? But uh, there you have it. So I'm going to talk about some of our open stacks, which I spoke a little bit about to our tour groups, our microfilm room, uh, closed stacks, the digital library, and members-only databases. And uh, uh, I did also did an hour of reference today, and we were dealing with all that today. So it was really quite a busy day. So this is our, uh, uh, the top one is the uh, family history room, and then this is the Pennsylvania room. And for those of you who have heard my old jokes or already brought my tour, so I'm sorry, some of this is going to repeat, but our family history room has about 10,000 published family histories, uh, A through R in the family history room, and S through Z in the uh, Pennsylvania room, because uh, we ran out of room in the family history room. Uh, uh, a lot of the family histories uh, are, are, are self-published or published in very small quantities. Uh, so in one sense, they're very rare. Uh, and you might find one here or one there or elsewhere in the country, but you're really not going to find this many under one roof uh, that I can think of. So that's a really wonderful thing. The downside to these very small, batched, published uh, family histories is that there's no um, editing. Uh, really, there's no one fact-checking all that much. You're really relying on one person's, usually it's one person's version of family history. Now, you, they have done research and you hope everything is right, but you might get a, a, a skewed uh, story. Um, I was telling one of the groups about um, a story about my, uh, my, my aunt, who, my, who came off as an angel, and my mother was furious about that, or my great-aunt, yeah. Uh, that her mother was just and her, her aunt was uh, an angel. But I, my family history for my family also has me going to an all-girls school, which is not, not possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Mother always told me I was pretty. I don't think I was that pretty, right? So, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, some facts can get wrong, or like I said, uh, my, uh, my great aunt was considered a saint and mother hated her, so uh, uh, in two different versions. The uh, Pennsylvania room down here is home to both Pennsylvania and New Jersey collections. We used to also have Delaware in the open stacks, but when the Genealogical Society gave us the, the bulk of their curve on their most recent library, uh, uh, it, uh, we had to uh, push the family histories in there. We had a lock up uh, Delaware. Oh, that's something. We had a lock up Delaware. Thank God it's a small state, so we can lock it up. But uh, it's all still there. We just have to page it for you, that's all. But just no browsing for Delaware. So um, this is uh, the Greenfield room, and, uh, and it has our microfilm, microfiche, and microcards in there. And now, of course, as I mentioned, we have the, uh, the three scanners that, um, that people can use to make uh, print copies, download copies to a device, or to email a version to themselves of what they print. And so far, that's been really good. Now, we do have little uh, quirks with the, with the printing and things like that, and um, it takes a while to, oh, I get it now, kind of thing. But, um, but people have really liked it, especially those who put things on their, uh, on their uh, drives, their thumb drives. Uh, they really like it. It's, it's, it's Is that what you able to use it today? No? I do find that we need more uh, large lenses. Uh, the ones that, that blow up things, because we were sort of sharing one between the things. And some people, you know, when you get the little death notices, you really need to make it big. And so that's something we need to look into in investing in a, a couple larger lenses. 
Um, this is something that you haven't seen on the tour today because I couldn't bring you all into our closed stacks. And when I have smaller uh, tours, I bring them into the closed stacks. And also, too, if any of you are local people, usually every fall, every October, we do ghost tours here at HSP. And we will take you into uh, the different parts of the building where there are ghosts. And um, so it's kind of fun. So you get to go into the stacks and we do it at night, and it's, it's really a lot of fun. So if you're here, we didn't do it last October because we had just finished renovations and we weren't doing anything like that. But we're probably going to do it again this year. And um, we had. Uh, we had the South Jersey Ghostbusters come in twice with their ghost-seeking uh, orbs and machines. And they found about 15 ghosts in the building on every floor. And some of them talk and some of them do things. And some of them do this, what we call spectral type. And you just hear an old-fashioned typewriter going this and things like that. And, and uh, so that, that's kind of neat. And also, we had a, a murder mystery written about HSP, and so when uh, at one of the ghost tours, I um, it's somewhat similar, uh, I give a, a tour of uh, places where the murder mystery happened at HSP. So you can see where the body was found and where the murderer was and all that sort of stuff. So it's sort of fun. But this, this is our, uh, this, uh, this is a little dated picture. This is before we put up our lovely signs on here. But this is our, our, our state's room. So this is where we have, I said to my tour groups, we collect for every state east of the Mississippi River. So we have Pennsylvania, New Jersey out in the open stacks. All the other states east of the Mississippi are here in the closed stacks. But we have a really wonderful North Carolina collection, uh, New York collection, Connecticut is very big, South Carolina is big, Ohio is big. Um, I think Virginia is really big uh, collection for that. Um, one of the reasons why, uh, for instance, North Carolina is so big, in fact, I had these state archivists from North Carolina come up here and look at the collection, and he said, oddly enough, this is the largest North Carolina collection I've seen outside of North Carolina. And at first I was proud of that. I thought, well, who else would have a North Carolina collection besides us in North Carolina, right? But uh, there was a Philadelphian who uh, lived in Philadelphia most of his adult life, but when he died, he left us in his will and said, uh, he was born in North Carolina, and said, I leave you these funds to buy books on the state of my birth. Well, I'm assuming he meant North Carolina, not the fact that he was cesarean or something like that. <laughs> um, so, I have so much money in the North Carolina, because he, he did this like in 1880. <coughs> Imagine how much money there is now in this fund. Um, I literally can't spend it all on North Carolina books. So any of you who want to write a book on North Carolina, call me. You name your price. So this is our reading room. Now, it's an interesting thing about the uh, historical society is that when we, uh, when we built this place, the, that room was not the reading room, it was the great hall of the Historical Society. Where you're sitting now, which is why we have these wonderful fake wood shelves, this used to be the library right up here. This was the library. I mentioned to my tour groups that when HSP was built in 1910, it was a state-of-the-art fireproof building, no wood at all in buildings. All the shelves were metal, it looked like wood, every table, every desk. In fact, the tables you were sitting at are the original 1910 tables, the chairs are new. Can you imagine sitting in those chairs today? Uh, you know, you know, that would really give you some, uh, some fun problems. Anyway, uh, but, but this is our, our, our reading room, yeah, the great, uh, great hall. And interesting, too, in 1946, um, we did what a lot of people did. We went crazy for the bicentennial. So we took the great hall, we took down the balconies, and we cemented over the floor. Uh, obliterating the Palladium window, we made the bottom into a museum of people who look at me and say, Lee, how did you do that? And I say, well, I was in eighth grade at the time, I had nothing to do with it, but uh, they did. And so in 1997, we decided to restore the Great Hall. So we, uh, it took a week, we had about seven really burly men with jackhammers taking out eight inches of poured concrete for a week. Let me tell you, that's loud. No matter where you are in the building, you just hear a <laughs> Anyway, we got up, put up new balconies, 
So these balconies look just like 1910, but these are what I call the fake balconies, uh, which means when you walk on it, it's like, keep walking, keep walking, no dancing, that kind of thing. And, um, but anyway, so there it is. It looks just like the great. We restored it to its 1910 look. That was in 1997 to 99, closed for two years. Oh, so this is our uh, this is our digital library. Um, and everyone, uh, I mean, before my dentist always says, "So when are you going to have everything scanned?" Uh, well, never, right? So we have 21 million items here. Uh, we have 20 million manuscripts, uh, 500,000, 520,000 published books, and 300,000 graphics. Uh, so just a lot of things. It's never ever going to be scanned. How many of you know what percentage of the National Archives is online? Our, our National Archives. Mm -hmm. Destroy our What? 10%? 10%? 10%? 5%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2%? 2
HSP members. Um, that's right. And, it, and it, right now, all that's here is the uh, the current stuff that uh, we have an institute, but we're going to populate it with other things as well. The types of family history and genealogy at HSP. So we have. Um, turn over the There we go. So uh, we have uh, family papers and manuscript collections. So, in fact, if you can see in some of the cases downstairs, we have a display of genealogical trees. And, um, and here's just an example of some wonderful family photos and family letters that we have. When we, um, as I said, I've been here for 21 years, and when I came here, we had two different reading rooms. We had a library reading room and a historical manuscript room. <coughs> And then in 1997, we combined them uh, because we realized that, you know, that, uh, you know, genealogists didn't just look for strictly genealogical material, whatever that is, yeah? And historians oftentimes needed genealogical material as well. They're trying to look at their families and look at them in family dynamics and you had to know who their parents were, their siblings. So we combined it and we found that genealogists started using our traditional historical manuscripts, and uh, historians started using genealogical collections. And so they found that they really had a lot more in common than they thought when we used to have two separate reading rooms and they kind of wouldn't go in each of the other's rooms. Uh, now they're just like happy, yeah? So uh, we have lots of family collections that, again, we always thought of them as historical family collections, the Chu family papers, the Cox family papers. Uh, these are just two huge collections. The Chu family is 450 feet, Cox family is 280 feet, I believe. But, um, you know, because you know, we thought the Chu family talks about their businesses and, and the Cox family was mining. But in here is just lots of genealogical data. And genealogists just find that's really great because they get to learn so much. So it's been a great, a great uh, cross reference. And here is again some, some images that we have, people who have certainly grown up, say, in South Philadelphia, in the, uh, in the very tight uh, quarters, you know, to kind of get people's uh, idea. It's a wonderful school picture. Are these identified, I mean, like, where? What school or who the people are? We really hope they are. Not all of them are. This one should be. There's another picture here that some guy just walked in off the streets and here I want you to have this picture and he walked out and he didn't give me his name. But it's such a lovely picture. Uh, not this one, but um, well, this is lovely too. We're not talking about it. So, especially women, what are they playing? Field hockey. Field hockey. Here we go. Don't you love her hat. Look at that. <laughs> of a, a well-to-do African-American family, the Baskins. Love that picture. This is the one that, it's, it's like 30 inches by 20 inches, it just came to the front desk, and here I want you to have it. I said, well, let me just give your name. Nah, and you walk out. <laughs> I have no idea. We kind of think that maybe it's Episcopalian, given with the, the style of the dress and how they look, and. Look at this guy here, all wrapped up in these, uh, <laughs> in the gowns, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful picture. <laughs> yeah. It's a great picture. So we also have, um, <laughs> we also have family charts. Now, what happened, yes, it is upside down, but you're the first person who knows that each of you are like, what? When I first started doing this, because I've been here 21 years, I actually had a slide carousel with slides, and I would go around the places with my slide thing doing this. And then when we decided to do a digital, I gave my slides to one of my colleagues to scan them all, and well, she did it backwards. And so that's my backwards slide of the, uh, <laughs> of the thing. So I guess I can't complain. Yeah, I don't know how you can fix it. Yeah, it. You can fix it. Yeah. 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 Very good. But is it is it just rotating or is it really just? Yeah. Yeah. It's upside down. It's upside down. It's upside down. Very good. Also <laughs> smart. I I actually had to have my another colleague do this for me. So. It's, uh, it's, uh, 
So, wills, probate records, deeds, tax records, census records. Now, of course, some of these are a little uh, outdated because now we can do a lot of the censuses online, but uh, we have some targeted census things, which actually is easier sometimes than going to a whole uh, census database if you really just know what county you're looking for. So here's like Sullivan County, Tennessee for 1880. Yeah, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. So, one of the things we have, which no one else has, and they're really fantastic, are these family history folders and these family history scrapbooks. The folders really are just folders with stuff in it. Uh, it could be notes, it could be Bible records, it could be a family tree. They're just amazing. We have about 10,000 of these and 10,000 of these. Every one of these is accessed via our online catalog called Discover, so you'll find the information about these folder Discover. The scrapbooks, the scrapbooks often are many families in each scrapbook, and each of those families are accessed through our online catalog Discover. So it'll say the Ingram family, the scrapbook page 71 or something like that. So they're all accessible through our online catalog information about them is. Again, I have to be careful when I say they're accessible through our online catalog. I know what I'm talking about. High schoolers still expect to see the real paper online, you know, all these things. Like, oh, you just know about it through our online catalog. You still have to come here to look at it. But these are great resources. Um, here's one of those David Kennedy watercolors that I was telling you about. They're really, they're really just great lovely and they give a really good um, description, uh, visual description of the area, and also a written description. Um, this is really great. I call these my little dead people. Uh, we received, I was here I think only a year, and I get a call from the Oliver H. Bear Funeral Home. Are these local people part of Oliver Bear? And at that time, they had a warehouse at uh, like 19th and uh, Sansom, something like that. So they called me up, it was December, it was, it was December 3rd, and uh, because it, had, it was doing a wet snow that week. And they said, listen, we have 90,000, 90, no, we have three, what's that? We have 90,000 records that we need to get rid of because we're selling our warehouse and um, either you take them or we're going to trash them. Yeah, that's what I said. And uh, we have their earlier records on microfilm, but they're talking about boxes of funeral records, not microfilm, from 1920 to 1980. So I said, uh, yeah, sure I'll take them. And they said, good, when are you going to come and pick them up? <laughs> Well, at that time, all I had was a Plymouth Horizon, those of you who remember the Plymouth <laughs> yes. There's no way I was going to pick up uh, 300 boxes of, uh, 500 boxes of uh, funeral records containing 90,000 funeral records. There's about maybe 20 of these folded envelopes, boxes, thin boxes. So I was trying to, uh, uh, I was trying to uh, kill some time a little bit. And, I, and I, I said, well, you know, I'm trying to not talk about pickup and delivery. And I said, well, you know, I'll be sending you a deed of gift and we'll own these. And he'll say, well, what do you mean you own them? I said, well, we'll own them if you give them to us. He goes, well, that means we can look at them? And I said, well, you know, we do charge a fee to come and look at things. And, I, and he said, well, you know, every now and then someone calls us, meaning the funeral home, and says, I want a casket just like my Uncle Harry had. <laughs> and they have to look at the record to find out what model casket their Uncle Harry had, so they can get this guy his same casket. And I said, ah. Now I like going to flea markets, and I like bargaining. So I said, hey, I have an idea. We'll let you have five free lookups every year if you deliver. <laughs> Those boxes came over three days using the same thing that they haul caskets over in. <laughs>
of shoes did they have on? Were they clothed only from the top up? You know, everything. What was the lining of the casket? Like? But it gives the name of the deceased, the parents of the deceased, what they died of, who is the attending physician. On the back of the funeral record is the uh, blurb that they sent to the newspaper. Then there's a list of people, the list of the cars in uh, the order that they went, you know, family first, and then says this, this, her, who sent the flowers. Just amazing. A really treasure trove of the information on the South Park Age Bears email records. So that's really great. They're accessed by a card index. The card index, unfortunately, is every five years. So when someone says, oh yeah, I think my relative died, I don't know, 1940, 1950, something like that, well, that's, uh, that's a lot of cards for me to look through. But, uh, but we can do that. We can do that. If you know the exact date, it's a lot easier. <coughs> they do. They do still look at it. You know, they haven't asked us that for a while. Deal's still on, so. So passenger and immigration records, published records, and newspapers and periodicals. Uh, so uh, we have on microfilm, we have the Port of Philadelphia re immigration records from about 1882 to 1942, something along those lines. Uh, that's still quite used. That was the project that was completed by the WPA. They put all the immigration records on kind of recipe card, kind of file cards. So we have that. <laughs> it's from 1882, something like that, to about 1940. Like, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I don't get um, uh, I have to check it. I have to check it out. What about before? Before, what we do is we rely on two things. One is we rely on this was also a WPA project. This was reprinted by a commercial company, but this was an 11 volume set. I think that's it. Uh, produced by the WPA, which was the Port of Philadelphia records uh, from, uh, I think it's 1740 up to about uh, uh, 1780 or something like that. So that's what we used prior to, prior to that. Uh, and then we also use, we have several sets of records uh, that are compiled by the um, it's heavily New York, but it's, uh, it's the series Germans to America, Italians to America, and Russians to America. Uh, that's our big uh, three sets for New York. There is, it's called the Famine Immigrants, and the, and, but it's only for the famine time period. Uh, those are, uh, all those books are in our reference room. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, the natural, so between the naturalization records and the uh, the, uh, and of course, the naturalization records aren't really uh, port records, but they're everyone who came in uh, who said, I'd like to be an American. Uh, so it doesn't include women, or very rarely does it include women. Why does it include women? That's right. There was, there was no benefit for a woman being a citizen because what's our main benefit of citizenship? You do find some women, but you don't find a lot. So it's not as good as an immigration list, but it's, it's, it's kind of the best we have for this, those early years. Another uh, product that we use, you probably know about this, is for, uh, Pennsylvania German pioneers. And people say, oh my gosh, my ancestors were Scottish, I'm not even there. Well, the people who comply with this book, and these are very early uh, immigrant records into Philadelphia, well, they were heavily German, but they listed everybody in the ship, irrespective of their ethnic background. So they just call it Pennsylvania German Pioneers because it's so many of them were German. But I always say, oh, we'll even you know, look at Pennsylvania German Pioneers irrespective of your ethnic group for a certain time. I think it goes up to 1726, I think is the uh, cutoff for that. But again, those dates, yeah, those are very early, very early. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, well, I mean, if you're going to come into this, come, come yeah, into yeah, yes, it, it would be an option. It's, so most people who aren't like, hey, I'm just visiting, I'll be gone in two weeks. It's sort of like, I'm here and I want to stay for good. So that it would be their, their, de their declaration, they're declaring it, and then their actual naturalization. So oftentimes they might have two days. So that's why I was asking about the women. So the women might have women. Right, they're not, on, they're not on the list. They're not, on the list. They're not going to get sent back. No, but they're just, they're here because they're usually with a man. 
station on uh, Columbus, what's now Columbus Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. yeah right on the river. No, it's not there anymore. There's the Delaware River. Yeah. 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 Oh, now you're going to stump me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say probably Delaware and Washington. So that's what I think. Sort of around there. Yeah. That's what I think it is. Overwhelmed. Are you overwhelmed? Yeah. Yes. So let us do the work for you. Yeah. So we have a research uh, by mail uh, service. Uh, we're still researchers are just waiting to take a tackle of your requests. And I told some of my groups that we have two different services. One is ready reference, it's free. Well, if we can answer your question in 10 minutes, we will do it. If it's more than that, if you're a member, it's $35 for the first hour, you get a discount on the second hour. If you're not a member, it's $60 the first hour, a discount if you want two hours. Um, so what, what is a ready reference question? This is a ready reference question. So this man sent me an email yesterday. It's a real question. And how would you just, I figured this out, and I answered it. I don't see if you can figure it out. Okay. So he says, hello, my answer just came to Pennsylvania around to, to Chile. Pennsylvania. Chile. Yeah. Okay. So of course, yes. So and, and he goes out and he gives up this is what he did. So I looked up Chilad. I thought maybe it's Gilead or something. No, no. But then look down here and he says, um, so it's spelled he had two hundred acres near Skepak. That's Skepak. Yes. In Chilada. <laughs> well, those of you who've been doing research know that Philadelphia is abbreviated Phil uh, Da. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably Philadelphia, and the C is just probably a misread P. So I wrote it back, I said, it's Philadelphia, not Chile. <laughs> so if you think how you came, so if someone came to the reference desk and said, down. They just said, my ancestors came from Chile. How come you can't find this? But that's where it's like, ah, it's so, yeah, okay. That, but that's a ready reference question. That's something to figure out. How to this is a research question. This actually came through um, last month. Uh, it says, I'd like to find out more about my ancestors. You came from the Allegheny County, perhaps, although he may have immigrated from London or Ireland. Primitive Baptist, oh, that's interesting. Mary Dillon, Philip Johnston, Johnston, from Beaver County, both died in Saline County, Illinois. We have a record of the death, but lack information on here. Thanks. So that's all they gave us. So we're going we're gonna to tackle that and see what we can find uh, based on these names. Uh, we start off with the names, and then we also then start looking for uh, the county and um, Let's see if we can find something there. We might have a little bit on Saline County, Illinois, but I doubt it. I'm from Wisconsin and I never heard Saline County, Illinois. So. Perfect. Sounds made up. See? Yeah. But we'll take the, but that's, but that's a typical research question. Could be. Could be. I mean, the only thing, other thing that it could be is Saline is that uh, Illinois, like Wisconsin, is a French territory. Well, we're going to start off with an hour on this, and then what we do is, if we think there's more, we tell them. We say, this is what we found, or didn't find, in an hour, and we have a few more things to look at, we name them. Would you like us to do an hour or two? And then they can say, no, yes. Uh, but we just, we, we really leave it up to I think, you know, we're going to know probably within the first half hour 
how hot we are, or whether it's like uh, this is really good. Uh, and the other thing is, and I have to tell people, and I used my uh, sister and husband to do it, uh, an income tax business that's for all the tax time. And I, have, I always have to tell people when they give us, you know, I said, you know, doing research for an hour, you're paying for our time, not the answer. People don't want to hear that. But it's true. And, so, and then they said, well, why should I have to pay you if you don't find anything? I said, well, when my sister does somebody taxes, they have to pay her whether they owe the government or not. You know, it's, it's, it's not my fault. Yeah? So, anyway, so that's what we try to do. But we really, we really try hard. We, we, want, to make, we want to give people something. Uh, so we're not into saying no. If we do say we couldn't find it, we list you everything we checked so that you don't have to recheck all the things or so you don't have to all do that again. Pay someone else to do that, right? We say a negative is also an answer. It just means, thank God I never have to go there again, yeah? So, <laughs> so become a member today if you want. And uh, more of these, oh my gosh, usually they have me in these photos. <laughs> That's true. Um, so, um, 21 million uh, records. We cover over 350 years of history. Um, on access, workshop, da, 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 da. that's good. This is a big one. Discounts on research by mail and reproduction services. And, <coughs> oh, you also get, yeah, besides the, uh, you get access to JSTOR also, if you remember. And JSTOR is a, is a uh, database of academic journals. I've been using that all the time, so I've been doing some extra school work, and uh, it's fantastic. It's a good deal. Excuse me. Yes? Fantastic for what? I don't know what I'm using. Well, uh, they have, like, for instance, they, they, uh, they index historical journals. So, um, Maryland History Magazine, a lot of the state historical magazines are indexed in JSTOR, and it's full text articles. And then you can look, and so they have it by category. They have economics, and history, and library science, and biology. So you choose what category you want, or you can say, look at them all. They have thousands of titles that are the full text. And then you can look at it, and you can print it out. So it's a good deal. It's a good deal. Um, <laughs> and so here's just some, some people doing some research. Yay, thank you. So, yeah. <laughs>